Hi, Ruben. Hi. Thanks so much for coming on to my podcast. Yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be fun. Good, good. I hope so. Um, I mean, it's a pretty fun topic because we just heard about, you know, me pulling a giant booger out of my nose in front of a stranger. So that was fun. Gross. <laughs> Fucking nasty. <laughs> um, but I need you to help me feel better because I heard that something really embarrassing happened to you. Was this like your first COVID test that you had taken? Was this last year? Two year? We're almost into this two years now, which is insane. Uh, but when was this? When was this? So it was last year, 2021. Uh, it was my very first COVID test. And it was, I think, over the summer. I remember it being nice out and I was mad because I was sick and I couldn't do anything. Like, not that I would do anything because we're still in a panini, right. but I was sick. Okay. And um, I went to just like a clinic or something because I wanted to do a rapid test and like know for sure. Was this um, like an indoor in-person testing site or was this one of the drive-through testing sites? Yeah, it was indoor, in-person. I was okay. in like a regular doctor's office and yeah, the nurse came in and was like, asking me about my symptoms and everything. And it was basically like all the COVID symptoms, um, runny nose, sneezing, coughing, all that stuff. And then, yeah, so she's getting ready to do it. And so my nose is already running, um, which I'm yeah. like, what can I do? Uh, right. But as soon, and it's a nasal swab, so she's got to get in there. And <laughs> literally the instant that she, sh- sticks to this thing in my nose, I like instantly start sneezing. Like oh, sneezing. No. Yeah. Like hardcore. And like and it's like instant as soon as she puts it in my nose. So I'm like <laughs> it's tickling your nose hairs. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I'm ticklish in my nose, which is weird to find out. So I'm like literally like sneezing all over the place. And she's like, oh good thing I have this face shield on. And I'm like, ah Sorry, <laughs> like it was literally like, an instant reaction that I couldn't control. It was oh my gosh! Yeah, the first time I took a, a COVID test, I was really nervous about the same thing about sneezing, mostly because I was afraid of my head going forward while this thing is in my nose. Were you <laughs> okay? Did it, did it like stab you? Or? I was. I was good. I think I like felt like the instant I felt it come, I like pushed away and was just like. All right, this is too much. Good thing I have this face shield on. <laughs> That's awesome. That is too funny. Uh, by the way, did you end up having COVID last summer? No, it was negative. Oh, well, that's so good. All that, sorry, lady. Um, but yeah, it was negative, which is good. <laughs> I loved that. Did you see his face, though? Did you see his face when I was like, what if your head goes forward when you sneeze. He was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. That's dangerous, y'all. If you're going to sneeze, make sure you turn away. Just be rude. Turn away. Don't don't worry about the Q-tip as long as it doesn't poke the back of your brain. Thank you so much, Ruben, for coming on the Nina Blanco podcast. Cuzzo, love you. One of the things that a lot of people kind of expect to hear from this podcast is like celebrity stuff. Because I got a big mouth and a lot to say, especially when it comes to the celebrities. And when I was doing my radio show, I did a lot of celebrity stuff. I've always done celebrity stuff. Like for my whole like 14 year radio career, I've always, always, always done celebrity stories. Um, But we're not going to call it hashtag Hollywood. Mm -mm. We're not going to call it hashtag Hollywood because I've always hated that. I never liked that name, Nina's Hashtag Hollywood. And it was just because, like, I never knew how to write it. If I wanted to, like, write an article or I wanted to do a social media post and use Nina's Hashtag Hollywood as, like, you know, my segment name and keep that on there, I never knew how to write it. Do I write, like, the hashtag symbol, spell out hashtag Hollywood? If I just put the hashtag symbol and then Hollywood, it looks like I'm just saying Hollywood. Because when I read a post and I see a hashtag, I don't read it as like hashtag Hollywood, hashtag Denver, hashtag radio, hashtag Nina. No, I read it as just Hollywood, Denver, Nina, radio. Like I don't read the hashtag part. So I never knew how to write it out. And I've always hated that name. So no, we're not going to call it hashtag Hollywood. Mm -mm. Speaking of mm mm-mm, I thought maybe like celebrity nuh-uhs with Nina. Is that corny? That sounds corny. Fine. Um, I could do 
the Hollywood sleaze. That was like my very first celebrity segment I ever did at a radio station when I was working in Carbondale. I was doing nights at CIL FM and I did Nina's Hollywood sleaze. The Hollywood sleaze? Maybe? I don't know. How about just this? Get into a ya. <laughs> Let's just get into it. Let's get into it. Okay, pause. Full disclosure, yesterday I recorded my new segment, but I just kind of wrote a couple subjects down and was winging it, and I decided that just ain't it. I got to put a little bit more effort into it like I did when I did, you know, my celebrity stuff on the radio. So I'm going to redo this real quick. That's why the change in scenery, lighting, everything. Same hair, same sports bra from yesterday, but we're going to go again. Okay, ready? Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson. Of course I was going to talk about this. I mean, this started a couple months back. A woman from Houston, Texas, accused Tristan of being the father of her child. Tristan denied it all up and down that no, it wasn't true. (laughs) His daughter's name, by the way. And he said he didn't know this woman, that she's crazy. She's making it up. Well, the baby has been born. The paternity test has been done. And Tristan, you are the father. Mm hmm. We all knew it was going to happen. That's not really a surprise. So the Kardashians are freaking out. Tristan doesn't know what to do. So he issues a public apology to Chloe. Mm -hmm. He said, Chloe, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve the heartache and humiliation I've caused you. You don't deserve the way I've treated you over the years. My actions certainly have not lined up with the way I view you. I have the utmost respect and love for you, regardless of what you may think. Again, I'm so incredibly sorry. Boy, if you don't shut the... I cannot with Tristan. Keep her name out your mouth. First of all, keep her name out your mouth, okay? You rode the Kardashian carpet for as long as you possibly could. Enough is enough. You fathered a whole nother baby into the world. I mean, get out of here. I'm sick of it. I'm not here for that. By the way, uh, TMZ cameras caught Tristan delivering dozens of roses to his daughter, True, before the apology to Chloe. And yeah, he is taking full responsibility because he has to. He got caught for this other child being sweet to True. And I really do hope that it is genuine. I really, really do. I mean, be a man, be a father to these kids. And if you cannot keep your dick in your pants, stop getting into relationships and good Lord, someone please, please just get this man a condom. One more thing about this whole situation. And I know I'm going to get some hate for this. Okay. I kind of hate myself for this to be completely honest, but I feel like it needs to be said. And I hate to say it, but Chloe deserves this. Yeah. She kind of deserves this girl. I mean, stop preaching women empowerment. Stop preaching self-confidence and self-love when it is clear that Chloe, you got some issues, okay? Issues continuing to take a man back like this over and over again. You're embarrassing yourself. Stop it. Kardashian insiders are already doing interviews. They're saying Chloe's pain caused by Tristan is over and she isn't shedding another tear for him anymore. Moving forward, it's all about Tristan being a good dad to their daughter, True, and being there for her. She's been hurt enough by Tristan and she knows she deserves better than this. But for some reason, I see Chloe getting back with Tristan. Prove me wrong, Chloe. Please prove me wrong. I hope I'm wrong. And I want you to prove me wrong. I dare you to prove me wrong. But really, at the end of the day, I think she's getting back with Tristan. The Bachelor started again. Who cares? Who cares? I hate this show so much. I don't understand why people like it. I mean, it is beyond fake. And I love reality TV. I love it. And I know half the stuff on reality TV shows is fake, especially the love shows. I mean, a producer is coming up to you like, no, don't say that. Instead, you should say this. Or, you know what would be really great for ratings? You should throw champagne in so-and-so's face. I know that. But The Bachelor is just so cringy to me. Gross douchebag guys dating multiple women. I cannot. And they're always douchebags. Always. I saw a meme recently and it said, Oh, look, it's a show about a guy dating multiple women at once, watched by women who hate guys who date multiple women at once. And it's true. So true. Get some class and watch better TV shows like Jersey Shore Family Reunion (laughs) and better shows like Love is Blind, 90 Day Fiance and Married at First Sight. Those are my all time favorites. Come on. Drunk Andy Cohen on New Year's Eve was a vibe because he's just like us. 
We've had it. We have all had it. We don't care anymore. And after the last two years, we got a lot of anger built up inside of us. Anger and sadness and all of it. And it all comes out when you have one too many tequila shots. Same. Same. (laughs) I also love uh, that after trashing the mayor of New York City on national television and blaming the cyborg that's probably going to take over the world one day, Mark Zuckerberg, he gave zero shits. He refused to apologize about all that stuff. The only thing he did apologize for, like the smart man he is, is to those responsible for some of his cash flow. Another TV station, ABC, and he apologized to Ryan Seacrest. I mean, that's where his money comes from, right? And Ryan Seacrest is a powerful guy guy in the entertainment industry. So Andy Cohen, you're a smart man. And finally, rest in peace, Betty White. You know why we love her? It's because she's a female trailblazer who did the damn thing. Mm -hmm. She started in radio, moved to TV. She had her own TV show and acting career until she passed. She never retired and she kept her humor the whole way through. We love her for that. I saw an article that was like, this is the problem with calling Betty White America's grandmother. And I have personally never have heard of that, but apparently people do it. And uh, the reason why it's wrong is because she was not a grandmother. Mm-mm, Betty White didn't have no damn kids. She's like me. She didn't want no damn kids. Uh Uh-uh, no thank you. Instead, she was an animal lover. And we know that not only cats and dogs did she care for at local shelters and stuff like that, but all kinds of animals, farm animals, goats, horses, ducks, exotic animals uh, being rehabbed back into nature. I've seen her with tigers and bears. And I'm sure that you have seen the Betty White challenge going around. It says, on Betty White's 100th birthday, January 17th, everyone should pick a local restaurant or animal shelter in your area and donate just five dollars in Betty White's name to make her 100th birthday the movement she deserves and I think we should this is a great idea I love this idea google it wherever you are local animal shelters pick one to donate to maybe you got a pet from a shelter donate there Uh, in Denver there are a lot of really really great animal shelters Uh, Denver Dumb Friends League we know and love uh, Colorado Humane Society Rocky Mountain Feline Rescue Life is Better Rescue I mean honestly just google it Go to whatever shelter's website and they are sure to have a donation tab. It should be quick and easy and $5. If you can swing it, all right? If you can swing it, five bucks is not asking for a whole lot. And one more final thing. Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson forever. I told you bitches he was hot and you laughed at me. Forget you. (laughs) That was a lot of fun. All right. Episode two is a wrap. I love you. Bye.